three, two, one. Yes, we're in it. Let's go, guys. This is my second podcast. And I'm super excited. I'm going to work on some things today. Yet, like last one, I think I talked too much, but we're going to try not doing that now. Um, yes, so today I got Anthony Flores, my friend from school, and Dom Vermeter, from my, my friend from school. How are you guys doing today? One at a time, please. Go ahead, Aaron. Uh, all right, I'm doing, uh, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> um, I'm excited to be on this podcast, man. Thank you for having me. Anytime. Always. Um, and uh, yeah, man, I'm just doing good, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dom, Dom, good, how man. you doing? I'm, I'm living, man. Um, just, you know, doing me, trying to take this quarantine on as best as I can uh, without trying to go insane. But yeah, like Ant said, appreciate you for having me on here. You know, it's a great opportunity some exposure for all of us here. So appreciate it a lot. Anytime. I'm glad you guys want to be on here. All right. So you guys both accepted colleges pretty recently. Dom, yours is, was it Drexel? Yes, sir. And Anthony, you did Temple like about a week or two back, right? Yes, sir. And what are you guys both majoring? Majoring in, yeah. (laughs) Um, I'm doing entrepreneurship at the closed school. All right. Nice. Uh, Anthony? I'm uh, majoring in film and media arts. Okay, yeah, I kind of figured that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. So if you, uh, so no one's probably going to know, but Anthony is insanely good at film. He's done – actually, I did one film with him. Was it December or something like that? Yeah, it was in December. That was a lot of fun. I, we're going to do – hopefully do a comedy-type TV show thing on YouTube, and we definitely want to do, like, a comedy whole film, like, short film with him. Short, like, I want to get in on that. <laughs> Dude, oh, yeah. I would, that's going to be so much fun. Yeah, I'm definitely going to link your stuff, like, both of you guys' stuff in like the description of all oh, this thank you man. Like on youtube one well, I, don't, Spotify, I don't think you can really put anything but youtube i will i want you guys was it was called fruitless right the fruitless yeah me and anthony did fruitless okay. together so i want you guys to see that it was a lot of fun all right yeah. so uh i want to talk about business stuff and dom you're doing for entrepreneurs mm. and i did yeah i'm in i'm in school for it business the last four years and you guys are taking um innovation entrepreneurship with me this year right mm-hmm. yeah anthony, i thought you were all right so and you have your own film I, like uh what, what is that even called like it's a business but i don't know what it is called. a uh videography service um uh basically i i get clients and uh we we talk with each other we work together to figure out what they want um and i do i, I like to i like to get my foot into everything you know i i do weddings uh, i do commercial gigs i do music videos um but overall like it's my, my my goal is to help people like get their vision out there you know what i mean like not everyone has a time to learn sit down and learn videography and how to edit especially if you have a another main gig like for for example for music videos if you're an artist you got to focus on that craft you know you can't like just sit there and try and spend all this time to learn how to edit videos or same thing if you're like a business you can't like you never want to make a video with your phone and, you know, promote it like that and not expand upon into professional videography. And basically that's what I do. I like that. I didn't like, we've been friends basically all four years, but more or less pretty close to last year, year and a half. And like, I never really knew about that. Like your whole, like, cause it's called ant vision. And I've never like, I never like knew that was the whole idea behind it. And that's such a, I like that. I, the name fits perfectly. Yeah, thank you. It flows mm-hmm. great. I like that. And Dom, you recently started a shoe. Like, is it a business company? Like, how how's that classified? Um, so I'm not really sure how to classify it yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just consider myself a reseller. Um, my my basic job is to uh, get a hold of shoes and designer items that you may not be able to typically get, like when you want it. Like, say for instance, a pair of Yeezys comes out and you can't you can't get them because there's a bunch of bots and a bunch of people get to it before you do. So now instead of yeah, paying the I'm two, sorry to interrupt, but I don't know how you get a hold of fucking the shit that you get a hold of. Honestly, <laughs> for real, some of this stuff like, is yo, like, where do you get it comes it? with it comes with strategy and it's just connections in the game. You gotta like yeah. you gotta know the right people to talk to. You gotta you got to just branch out and network because if you scratch somebody's back, they're going to scratch your back as well. Like that, it's just a whole favor game. Like mm. I'm in a bunch of different resale and business groups and say, if honestly, like 
So some people, when they start, first start reselling, their idea is that, oh, I, I got this shoe. I'm going to make $100 profit minimum. That's what I want to do. But I ha I've only made that much profit off of one shoe, to be honest. And I, every other shoe has been pretty much $20, $30 flips if I if I can even get them for that. And it's just it just keeps building up. Like, I'd rather have $20, $20 flips than one $400 flip. You feel me? Like, Absolutely. That, that's how it works. It's yeah, totally. Like, it's, uh... There's a science behind it. That's a good mm -hmm. way to look at it, in my opinion, because if you can't, sh like, obviously you do want to do $140 flips, but it's probably, it's a lot more rewarding having four or five, 20, 30 hour flips instead of exactly. just one 140 flip. Cause like exactly. having one flip for $140, yeah, that's cool, but it doesn't really show that you know how to do it. The, exactly. Having several 20 to 30 flips in a really short amount of time, it's been maybe a month or two, right? Yeah, I made uh, I have about four thousand in sales and uh, twelve hundred profit. Jeez! Holy crap! I didn't know about that. Damn, that's man, that's in insane. Four months. Yeah, not four months. It's been, it's been fun. Yeah, that's that's amazing, amazing, man. I didn't yeah. know about that, and like I don't understand shoes because like I I always like hunted and fishing, like hunted and fishing <laughs> stuff. So shoes, yeah. clothes have not never been something big to me because I'll I'll ruin them really really quick. So. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing how people make a lot of money. I know mm -hmm. Mr. Sh uh, our, one there's of our business. Money to it. Oh yeah, there's seems to be. I know our business teacher, Mr. Sharp. Uh, he was talking about kids from Millville. I can't remember if the kids graduated or not, but like if they like actually finished high school, because they started making a bunch of money from reselling shoes and like merch from concerts and stuff. And they mm -hmm. apparently, uh, the, our teacher said like this kid makes thousands and thousands a week. Like it's insane. Yeah. And oh you made 1200 in sales off of like, I mean, it's basically just you, but you're also, you're not working with other people, but it's you practically. Right. Yeah. Well, well actually, um, so you guys like obviously know Caden and stuff. Um, we're both going to Drexel together and he's actually, I'm trying to get him started into it because we want to merge together and make like our own brand once we both get to Drexel. So I have a goal of how much I want to make profit wise and where I want to be. And then I'm trying to get him to that point too. So we can both like have our own separate reputations, but then merge together to make one collaborative. Brand. Both. Yeah. That, like that. Yeah. That's good. Uh, something you probably should look into. I mean, it's, is it set up as a business yet? Uh, no. Well, the thing, the risky thing about setting up as like an official business, you know, where you gotta like pay taxes and stuff, like <laughs> that, you tax. actually have to tax your stuff. Yeah. Like, like yeah. I could have, like instead of me pricing a pair of Yeezys for, and that's also the other thing too. I never charge market. I never charge market because if I did, then you could just go buy from like StockX or go brand new. You know what I mean? If a shoe's worn <laughs> once, and it's in great condition. Like, like I have a pair of Yeezys right here. I'm looking at um, market for them right now is around 230, which isn't a lot. It's only 10 over retail. I'm selling for 180. They're worn like probably three times, but I'm not going to make someone pay the price I wouldn't want to pay. You know, that, yeah, that, that's mm -hmm. at least you recognize that there's a lot of people, especially if I were to do something like this, because I don't understand shoes. If I were to do something like this, I would definitely not market like that because, like, well, yeah, I'm going to try getting this much more, but no one's going to really want to do that. And it's yeah. insanely good that you can recognize that really good. It's really interesting yeah. how um, your kind of business tactics translate over, I think, every business in general, because. When I started, you know, like, like how you're not flipping for a market or $400 profit. Mm -hmm. I'm what I do is like what what the, the base the concept behind that is offering value before you ask you know what I mean mm -hmm. before you ask for money so what I what I did to start out was uh I did free videos um just to show my clients that there's a difference between what you can do on your phone versus what I can do or any videographer or freelancer out there can do with a camera and whole setup but it's about showing that value and I, I like how it translates over to the to the shoe business too because you don't want to like kill anybody with a price you know what i mean yeah exactly and it's crazy how like like your mindsets how you this? you guys i don't know about anthony but i feel like dom you never really and i don't want to offend you like a super business mindset because you always did engineering and stuff and i thought you were going to do like bioengineering or biochemical stuff yeah before. that was my plan i mean i still plan on doing that down the road but this is just like a like a startup and like 
but like now you're su- seems super, super business oriented. And I don't know if like business class has helped change that or anything. Cause I know it definitely I did, did for to me. Be honest. <laughs> it definitely <laughs> did. dude. <laughs> I came into high school wanting to do computer work, fixing computers, building. Bro. <laughs> like, and now <laughs> yeah, let's just talk about that. Let's talk about what we came into high school envisioning. Yeah, right. Oh, I want to explain to everyone. Our high school is not a normal high school. We go to a technical high school. We all have career paths that we get to pick. I'm in IT business. Anthony is in um wait, what is it called again? <laughs> just call it communication. It changes you all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's called communications and Dom <laughs> is in engineering. So we're all in different fields, which is super cool. That's why I like we have a lot of talking topics we have now. But mm-hmm. oh, what were you going to say, Anthony? Let's just talk about what we wanted to be going in our high school because it's it's changed, you know. It's <laughs> changed. It it's is crazy. definitely crazy. Like, Anthony, I went in a like? high school. Yeah, this is crazy. I wanted to go and be a graphic designer. <laughs> wow. I to you were pretty good at it though. Going in the high- I was not good at it. But <laughs> you are now. I thought it. your work was pretty good. If anyone- I can make little YouTube thumbnails and shit, but no- nothing crazy like. But you never had a ton of like experience, like practicing it. Like you've done it for nah. the last four years, but you haven't done it extensively. And your little like bits you've done is insane. Like I've like the uh, little picture on screen right now. Like he did all this for me. So shout out to him for free. Like yeah. thank you. <laughs> this is the whole thing yeah. he made. So yeah, you wanted to be a graphic designer. And now exactly what's your goal after high school? My goal after high school. Um. I am going to Temple University and that's in uh, Philadelphia. So my goal is to expand my client reach uh, than the entire city. Um, you'll, you'll have me. I'll have you. <laughs> exactly, man. I just want to, you know, <laughs> my goal before I leave college is to get a billboard with uh, Ant Vision on it to promote that's crazy. the entire that's city a, of Philadelphia. That's, that's my end goal. Oh my God. I, I can imagine it. I couldn't imagine like a billboard of like something yeah. like of me like that. That's so cool. Like that's a great like goal. Yeah, I want to say for that. Yeah. Like, I that want people awesome. to know that they can get their videos from me. They don't have to go to any other huge production company that's going to charge them ten thousand dollars for a freaking music video. Because it's a personal connection. It's a personal connection. It's a personal have. connection. I want to develop as many of those as I can mm-hmm. when I go. So. So like I like that I like that you like I like how you like the personal connection behind it. you're not just obviously you're gonna do it for money because you do want to make money but you're yeah. not you just love the art of making videos you're not doing it, it because you want to be super super famous and super super successful you can no. make the normal like I don't know what normal is but like I remember reading something in business class that seventy thousand dollars a year is kind of sustain- like a good number for people to stay happy after making money and you can make that or maybe even a little less and you'd probably be happy as long as you're doing what you love. Hell yeah, man. It's, I just also like, I love like talking to the people that I work with and listening to their stories and what they want out of this life. You know, it's like, it's inspiring to me, especially because it makes me, it fuels me to want to keep doing what I do. You know, like I, like I, I talk to, I talk to underground rappers from, from New Jersey that I've worked with and just listening to how, how much drive they have. It's, it's insane. And like, even if not a lot of people support them, like they're still going fucking hard every single day. It's, it's insane. It really is. Got to. I, I can relate to that. <laughs> kind of relate to that. So it's a little, it's relating to it in a different sense, how like hearing people's stuff and like, uh, uh, you said something, but I want to, you, you'll know what you said when I said what I'm saying. Like when people like message me and they'll be like, dude, you just made me laugh for like hours straight. And I haven't smiled in like two weeks. Like, and like, I had some girl yes. text me yesterday or someone text me yesterday or something on Instagram saying, um, something about their, their cat had to put, put down or something like that. And she hasn't smiled in like two weeks and watching your videos mm. has made her laugh and feel so much better. And I was like, that's crazy. I'm just saying jokes. Dude, that shit gives me like, makes my hair stick up. Yeah. I, like, I got like, goosebumps. Yeah. Like it makes me feel yeah. so good. I'm like, I'm just telling jokes. I never knew it would have this much of an impact on anyone's mm-hmm. life. And, That's awesome, bro. And I think it's the like the hands down greatest feelings, and I want everyone to be able to ex- uh, experience a feeling like that. So everyone do good. <laughs> That's all you guys yeah. do. All right, Dom. I want to ask you. So, what was your initial uh, idea? What you want to do in life? When, in, like coming into high school? 
see that's what i wasn't sure of i didn't even so i was just gonna go to my home district high school uh cumberland regional but i my dad told me to just go for cc tech and he was like you know what's the worst that could happen they could say no you know just i don't know so i went for engineering because it's the most expansive field like you can go anywhere with engineering so i just picked that and i knew with whatever i wanted to do i just wanted to help people like that's that's still my goal my ultimate goal is just to help people make a difference you know because i want to have that feeling like like you have like when you got that comment you know what i mean and obviously i'm not gonna i'm not gonna get that from selling shoes but i still like it's still helping people in a way you know what i mean because i don't know but but yeah like my end goal is just like like help people and that's just the like the main idea i've stuck through with cc tech so i really never knew what i wanted to do i mean yeah you mentioned how i'd wanted to dab a little bit in like biomedical engineering and stuff but I just I took AB bio this year and I wasn't feeling it and I just mm-hmm. figured it probably wouldn't be the best move to major in that and then regret it so I, that innovation entrepreneurship class shout out Erickson go um just like made me like realize that like I have the entrepreneurial mindset and I just want to keep like pushing that forward because I know that can be implemented in so many different ways as well and I can eventually yeah. do what I planned on doing in the first place down the road. So, you know, yeah. you, 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 you talked about that, like it was nothing, but I, it's, it's incredible how self-aware you are. You know what I mean? Like, thank you. You could have easily just been like, you know what, this is what I came into high school for. This is what I, what's, what's going to make me the most money securely a biomedical engineer, mm-hmm. but you were self-aware enough to realize that, even though you hated AP bio, <laughs> you knew it's so hard. <laughs> you, you knew that there was something else for you. You know, you didn't just yeah. do it for the money or do it because it was the safe route. You know, and look mm-hmm. at you now, like you're you're you're, you're making money. Uh, it's, yeah, it's it's incredible. I appreciate that. That, that is awesome. Cool. And I want to explain a little bit what I wanted to come in high school for because I was going to talk about me. No, I'm kidding. But um, <laughs> I, I, I originally came into high school for information technology, which is a lot of, and business. And it's all computer stuff. I really just wanted the computer side of everything. Business, I didn't, I didn't even know anything about business. I was like, all right, cool, that should be easy anyway. And it kind of is, but it's, I'm just good at it, a lot of it. It's really interesting. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I, and originally coming into school, I wanted to build computers, fix computers, and learn to code a little bit and it's crazy how that's not even close to my agenda at all anymore (laughs) i i could drop it as a whole class and not lose a wink like a bit of sleep over it business is so much fun to me i love it i love the whole like art of everything i really like marketing because i've seen a lot of things with marketing where it's like how you almost manipulate people into seeing your product liking your product wanting to buy your product I just think that's so cool. And I see it, it a lot because cool. with yeah. TikTok, I see it a lot. And some people are really, really good at it. They'll show like legit like a second or two, say something very hooking right in the beginning of it. Mm-hmm. And I know I'm trapped for the whole minute long video. <laughs> like millions of others are. And I'm like, that is such a good pitch. Oh, my phone ringers on. But it's <laughs> such a good pitch for people to do in TikTok. And like, like people do it that kind of stuff in marketing all the time and it's so interesting and i love all that stuff and i definitely want to do more with business and i give all my love for business to my business teachers and like why i got like a love for business from my business teachers at gary v and i know anthony me and you mm. share a lot of this with gary v i'm trying to get him on the podcast i've had oh my god dude i will oh my goodness gary v is a pretty cool dude and like i don't know if you've ever literally listened to him though i'm sure you probably have seen some, yeah. uh, slips, snips of him and stuff but like i watch like all of his of his stuff and he's such a big reason why i'm like how i am really because he doesn't care about anything besides making the world a better place mm-hmm. like he does really good in business and he loves all his business but he did it because he cared because i remember watching something of his it's an old clip of his uh, and he reposted it some he because he started in new jersey he started his wine stuff in new jersey and some yeah. lady didn't get her delivery like two and a half hours away and it was like rainy out and stuff and everyone else was there I was like all right it's just one lady's two bottles of wine or something nothing really important gary v was like no like she's getting her stuff and he drove up there personally and wow. gave her her wine which is insane to me like wow. that's, like how much he cares i didn't know about, about that he yeah he cares that. so much about people and like, like and i have my i don't give a fuck attitude because i am too 
like i love okay. his uh one thing is like when people say stuff like um just don't care and like he also he gives compassion to people i watched that today and like other times before like he feels generally bad for people that take time out of their day to watch your video it doesn't matter if it's a full thing or not and then come at something mean like you're ugly oh you mm-hmm. suck you're never gonna see. he gives compassion he feels generally bad because how bad must their life be for them to want to comment something to degrade others to make themselves feel better right. and like when i heard that a while ago like i that like hit me i was like wow like so when someone says something bad to me i never take offense to it and like i have some pretty bad stuff said to me sometimes and i'm not gonna say it every now and then it doesn't like kind of affect me a little bit but like, <coughs> it's nothing like it probably doesn't affect me as much as it would if i never heard the stuff that gary v says because absolutely it's, it's yeah. such a great way to look at life and like he's always like optimism over pessimism and I'm, i i, I preach that i love that and mm-hmm. it's such a good like uh mindset to have and i, I could go on all about gary like, the dude's a man he's yeah. saying and i love all this stuff that like, and, like he does. that's a great like mindset for you to have too especially in your position right now because you're yeah. a social media influencer like you gotta like you gotta be able to like brush something off your shoulder and like take it as a compliment even though it may not be you know what i mean just because of like the position that you're in you can't retaliate like so that's great that you have that mindset established because some people, they don't even like have that established like at their current standings. Like so many people like on the internet get affected by so many things. Like, like you know, like all the beef on YouTube and whatever, like people just, but like, because you have that mindset and you didn't learn that from it. I mean, I'm sure some of it was experience, but because of like that message that you took from Gary V is like, that's, that's a like strong like mindset to have. And it's, it's great that you have that given your, you know your position and all so yeah like, i think it's great i was gonna say something i kind of i do this a lot i'll lose like ideas i have in my mind okay here i got i got it i had to talk a little bit <laughs> so i also i don't know where i adapt to this like it, like so like obviously you guys probably know i'm super generally happy all the time yeah, it's very all the time I don't, I don't really know times i'm not a lot of people think it's a facade but it's not i have like a thing i always say to myself it's like if i can't control it why am I going to worry about it? Because, like, yeah, I could worry true. about it, have the same outcome. I could not worry about it, have fun, and have the same outcome. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'm going to pick that out. And I always use this dumb little saying, but it, it means, like, deeper than what, how it's funny it is. It's like, so if you fell down a flight of stairs, don't be, like, sad and stuff that it happened. I mean, just be happy that you got down really quick. And <laughs> oh, man, it's be funny. happy that you got back up. <laughs> yeah, like, it's dumb, right. and, but it's funny. But it's, I, I don't know, like, I like it because, it just means a lot to me for saying that. I don't know, but I remember I said it in a right. Socratic circle before, and like everyone laughed at me. But I was like, I don't know. I love that saying. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a lot of things. A lot of people need to like, I think, learn. Obviously, like, yo, if someone like dies or something, you don't have control over that. And yes, I would exactly. be sad about that too. But you can't let it ruin your life. Exactly, man. Because that and person wouldn't want that either. I think not. you're set for this, like, for this lifestyle, man. To be honest yeah you've got the right mindset like definitely like in the world we are today like with a lot of business stuff and especially all three of us doing business type stuff you just Mm -hmm. you just gotta take the best you can out of life and just have as much fun you You can't let it um for anyone watching that doesn't know um i i applied to my dream school nyu uh back in uh january and i got deferred and then i got denied um i took it to heart when i got denied literally the day and the day of and that was the only day i spent sulking about it the next day i was up and going making new plans looking at different colleges figuring out what i was going to do because i knew that maybe that just wasn't right for me you know like it say if i did get accepted i could have been like easily hit by a bus on my way to school you know like it's just about perspective it's just about looking at what what positives can happen over what negatives have already happened exactly i I remember i uh i texted you when you told everyone yeah and i didn't want to be like sappy and like oh f them like everyone else was Mm -hmm. i I remember exactly what i said but i remember like the gist of it was just like dude like i know this sucks and i'm not trying to be sappy or anything but like just just keep you moving forward prove to them that like Mm -hmm. you were worthy do great things without them and just do, don't dwell on this. Like, just use it as fuel. Do yeah. better. Yeah, I think I messaged you too. Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, you did. But 
Yeah, college is weird to me. I've never cared about college. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, I'm going to community college, which isn't, isn't bad. If anyone's going to community college, it's great. At least you're going to college. And it's free for me to go, so I'm just going to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm going for business entrepreneurship, which is cool, so it should be kind of fun. I just want to learn business. And I don't think I'm going to go to get my bachelor's. And I, I don't know if you guys are. I'm sure, Dom, you are going to get your bachelor's. I'm, getting, I'm doing a master's plan. Are so you doing a master's? Years. Like I don't, five or three show up. Yeah, I don't, I've never, I don't know. I don't know if from watching all these business people and like how the founder of Ikea, Ikea only got like maybe a third grade education and mm-hmm. his whole like idea of that is insanely good for, I'm I, actually all of us learned this. I'm going to explain it to everyone listening to the podcast. Ikea has their, like all their buildings laid out as almost like a, it's not like a maze, but it's one way around. There's one way in one way out, but you got a loop around the entire thing. And halfway through, there's like a food court type thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like that's like, and a founder of IKEA maybe had a third grade education. I could be wrong. I, I don't think I'm wrong. I remember hearing that somewhere and reading it, but I hope that's not wrong. But that's crazy that like he didn't need an education, did all that. And that's like kind of my mindset with things. I guess an education would give you an upper hand in a lot of things. I don't yeah. know. I, just, I utterly hate school. It definitely depends on the major. It definitely yeah. 100% depends yes. on the major. Like, like to be honest, me, I'm, I'm not 100% satisfied that I'm going to school for a film degree. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it a bug with you. I, I'm not that satisfied. The only reason I want to go is the connections that I could build, exactly. surrounded by like-minded people like that. And I know you can get that from other places and everything, but I know those what I want to do is expand my business. Okay. Maybe my professors won't be able to help that, but what my professors may be able to help me do is get a job, uh, Mm -hmm. in the field Mm -hmm. that I can hold, make enough money to have a sustainable way of living while I work on my side hustle. You know what I mean? Exactly. That's that's smart. Yeah. That's kind of like my plan with it, but I, I 100% disagree on the fact that you need, school to be a good filmmaker or a good businessman mm-hmm. I, I disagree with it yeah me too but like obviously if you're going to be like a you know a biochemical engineer you're going to need to yeah. you know yeah but, yeah yeah exactly yeah. and drake i don't even think i don't even think you need school <laughs> i mean it's good to get it but like you already have a, a fan base that can carry you you know what i mean yeah it, it's kind of crazy like i don't technically need it but I'm only going because it's only a year. I'm going to suck it up, get my associates and that. That can probably help me with future things if everything else falls downhill. But right. uh, with TikTok, it's crazy. I do have a pretty big fan base with TikTok. It's almost at one, uh, 2.6 million now. That's insane. Which, mm. yeah, it's absolutely insane. But it's so, it, it, it sounds bad, but it's hard to build more off of that. Like getting to my YouTube, I've gotten 5K subs from, which is really, really good. That is really good. But it's because of that Congrats. one video. Thank you. And it's from that one video I posted of a montage of my jokes. And it's everyone just kind of came over and saw the jokes and it's at 60 some thousand views. But I don't like not many people are going to watch other videos. Damn, that one it is, video. damn 67,000. Which is crazy, but it just kind of sucks. They're only coming over because they like that one video. And that's not the content I fully want to make. I can't just do, I'm not a comedian. I don't make my jokes up and I make that fully aware when anytime anyone asks, Oh, how do you think mm-hmm. of that joke? I don't, I find it right. I'm not funny. <laughs> So I thought are you, are you just fun. afraid you're gonna are you just afraid you're gonna burn out? Is it the, the problem? That is the thing. I, and TikTok isn't gonna last. It's gonna be like Vine. TikTok's yeah. not gonna last. I was watching something how TikTok is banned on because like how China owns it and they get all your information. A lot of people freak out mm-hmm. about that, but I'm kind of confused because don't they know that every app you put any information on, companies sell it? But, For real, there's yeah. contracts. The way just, you agree to it's just funny how they only think TikTok and it's because it's Chinese, but there's so many other Chinese companies that we use that um mm-hmm. they get your information. Like Ali baba it's a chinese company and it's positive mm-hmm. they get your information for it information yep. from it but um oh where was i going with this to be honest oh tick- You're talking about out. just like burning out yeah 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 and with I'm, I'm a little afraid of it because i'm trying to transfer and like instagram has been popping but it's because of my jokes again any other videos or anything doesn't do all that good and this my last podcast i posted i think it was friday or something like that it, it's at it was 500 views which is really good for a pretty small channel and it's going to constantly kind of keep going up for the next month in views. Uh, and I'm hoping with getting more uh, bigger influencers on bigger than me, 
would boost mm-hmm. my views too. But I, I just kind of want to get away from TikTok itself because it's not going to last. It's definitely going to be like done in the next year or two. And in a year or two, I could grow a lot more. But I mean, if I can't grow off the app, then I failed. I can't sit in one spot. You need to move right. and build on different you can't things. Be a sitting duck. Yeah. I'm and, sitting here and I'm reading the comments on your YouTube videos. And everyone loves you and your family. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you should center stuff around Every your family. family. That's what I'm saying, though. With the like, you just need to start going idea. vlogs with your family. Like, do vlogs if we can make our idea come to life with the 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 show. Yeah, that would. I, and my only other issue is that is because I want to move in the next two three years. I want to be living in Florida. So you don't and, know what opportunity mm-hmm. there for you that could change how you and feel now. I don't have my fa- yeah, I don't have my family there, so it's I can't like Damn. use them yeah. anymore. I'm not using them. I'm, I'm like they can't be involved with my stuff anymore, and like it, it kind of scares me because I'm like, dude, I have such a big fan base, and I feel terrible if I can't make something out of this now. And I'm like, I'm not saying I haven't made some money, but it's not like making crazy money. I'm not. I can't live on my own right now with like TikTok and stuff. I only get stuff from brand deals and promotional type stuff. And I, mean, I can't live off of that. And you can't make a brand deal type of stuff every video because no one wants to see constant brand deals. I did that for a little bit. My views plummeted. I remember there was one mm. point when I think there's like 40 or 50 videos in a row. That's a million plus views, which is insane. Jesus. And, but it's like, I've gone lower down. My average views is like maybe 350 to 500,000, which is it's still a lot for like 2.5 million. And I'm having an average of 500,000 views, which is still insane but it's usually only my jokes that do that. If I do anything original, it doesn't really take off much, which kind of like sucks for me. Cause it's like, what can I do to like, tr- like go from jokes and slowly get to something different, but still keep the same fan base and like the views up. And I don't know what to do. And I've been trying for the That's last like challenge. couple of weeks. And I, I can't, I, I don't want to say I can't cause I know I will do something, but it just kind of freaks me out. And like thinking, that we're graduating and um, what is it? It's almost May in a month and a half. I'm kind of scared what's after high school now because I have college and then I need to get a job and I don't want a normal nine to five. I want my own business. I want to do my own thing. And I don't know. It kind of scares me a little bit. I mean, so the, the biggest thing here is your follower base. You're, you, you don't want to lose them. Why don't you ask them what they think? Be transparent with your people, you know? Like, don't just try to scramble around and find ideas that you think might work. Ask them what they want, you know, and you let them know if it works or not. That's a good idea. Yeah, I like, but like, I've done different things. Everyone's like, don't do this. Like, a lot of comments and stuff, like, don't do this. Get the jokes. No, if it's not a joke, I don't want it. Like, I'm like, damn, like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. (laughs) But I don't know. It's crazy. You got to be real with your people. People respect you more for being real than trying to scramble some last minute facade together. That's true. And that is you. You're real, That's you know? True. Like just yeah. keep it just keep it real with them. But all right. Uh Anthony, I want to talk more about film. Cause Okay. I'm not I'm not good in that field at, at all. I've tried editing stuff and it turns <laughs> out bad. But what are some like challenges you get while filming a video? Um what kind of video? What do you what do you uh, want to know specifically? Like so you did a that client? One, yeah, client based video, not for yourself, like someone uh video for someone else. Um the biggest challenges definitely come from uh being on the same page with someone. <laughs> uh I've found that it's really hard for others to communicate what they want. Um and so like for instance, um, my uh, my my video teacher, Mr. Neater. Shout out, Mr. Neater. Uh, yeah, Neater. This is my guy. Um, he had me do a uh, a little like animation for one of his clients, and dude, I had to revise that like at least thirteen times <laughs> because Crazy. the client just kept asking for more and more and i know like you need to put a cap on what what they can ask for but it's 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 the whole idea of of being on the same page with people i think that's the biggest challenge not anything technical ever 
unless I, I forget to charge my camera, my microphone, or my audio recorder, which then that's a huge deal. <laughs> but uh, I thank God I, that hasn't happened to me yet. Um, but yeah, just just being on the same page with people, it can be it can be difficult. I know if I were to try to like explain something to someone, oh, that'd be so bad for me. If I ever had or, a video idea, you or know. oh man, like. The client on the day of filming will ask for something that they didn't pay for. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> like, yeah, do this uh, animation over it. Like, what? Yeah, no, I have problems with that too. <laughs> that, that's not in the contract. <laughs> like, we didn't yeah. talk about that. You know, I I like to have everything figured out beforehand. That's why. Also, recently I started doing uh, sit down meetings at least a week before a production shoot that's because smart. I want that's to smart. take notes yeah. on what you want. You know, like I want to. Yeah really understand what you want before we go into shooting so So, yeah the whole thing with like someone adding something last minute and like they didn't pay for it i feel like that's such a challenge for you especially right now because you're like uh you're not new to film but you're like not known so it's like you don't i don't know how to explain that but you can't you don't want to deny someone's request Mm -hmm. because it can look bad on you yeah they might not and like from their perspective it's like oh you're denying my request but it's like at the same time it's like well you didn't pay for it and it's super Mm -hmm. last minute like i can't I, that's why I started contracts that state everything and that's smart. Yeah. Guys, yeah. And I that, have a question too. Like, um, sorry to cut you off, but do you have like a basis, like, like a, like a, like a, like a basic like package that people pay for? How do you base your pricing? You know, everyone, everyone is asking me that, but it's like, it's so difficult to come up with a video package I know. because it's like, it can vary from every single concept is unique, you know, like, mm-hmm. It's not like I can say, yeah, one minute video, uh, 500 bucks. Like I can't do that because a one minute video could be all interview with B-roll and that could take me like 30 minutes to edit. Mm-hmm. Or the one minute video could be a very involved uh, sequence that is cinematic as hell, has a bunch of animated effects and transitions, which can cost a lot more than 500. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I, I think I, I think I'm going to... I'm going to figure out something I can do because I'm also looking into uh, starting my website, but I need to finish some more client work real quick. But uh, my website, I'm going to have three well, different that's a perfect idea. I'm going to have three. Oh, say it. Hold on. <laughs> I'm going to have three different categories. I want to do wedding, commercial and music videos. And uh, those will be on separate tabs. And maybe I'll, I'll, I'll figure out like a, like a, like a base package for each of those categories. And then I'll send you a quote depending on what you want. Yeah, that, that was my idea. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. but, like, like do, like, yeah, just, like, do a Google form and then just have, like, so, like such specific questions to mm-hmm. projects you've done before and then, like, show, like, little examples. Just be yeah. like, this is what you could get for this base price and this is what you get for that base price. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Anything yeah, exactly. in between, just put in, like, the extra comments box and we'll figure it out when I give you your quote. Mm-hmm. That's my plan. <laughs> I mean, this just came to mind. I don't know how this would work. But, like, you know, you have your weddings, commercial, and uh, a music video. They then they'll have, like, a submission box where they type out a, as much detail as they want or little, little details they want of what they want. And you have your starting package. And, like, I don't know. I'm just gonna, This is low probably, but $100 for a music video. And then that's mm-hmm. how you're starting at. And then they make the requests and stuff. And then you pack on, like, you know, then you price it out, like, to that. And you kind of have a message system back and forth. And also your sit downs and persons are person are way better than that would be. Definitely I feel like that'd be something you like helpful to get your like, so you know what you're kind of walking into before you sit down. Yeah. 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 Very I like personal that. touch too as well. Yeah. And like, exactly. Like my goal is to like kind of make friends with the client beforehand. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That way, yeah. say if they're, for example, like a rap music video, say if they're the main subject and they're obviously going to be performing in front of the camera, I don't want them to feel nervous or anything. Like I want them to know, like, like, like I really fuck with you as a person, you know, yeah. like I'm not just here to do business with you. Like I like your music and everything. And that's, yeah, that's sure. what I want to try to do with this podcast too. Cause like I'm getting these people on there and yeah, like obviously I'm going to get some exposure with them on here, but three of them are reasons why I'm into TikTok. I watch them all the time. They've been following mm-hmm. them for the last like eight months. And That'll that's make for an on. awesome podcast. That would. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait to get some of these people on there. I'm excited. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, life's crazy. 
It is. <laughs> yeah, it would have thought, right? Every second. But right, I want to change the topic a little bit from business. I want to go to fitness a little bit. Uh, you know, oh. That's something I'm super ah. passionate about. Oh. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> All right. So if anyone who's watching this probably knows, because if you're on my YouTube videos, you know those workout videos. If you're on my Instagram, there's workout videos and my TikTok workout videos. So I'm super passionate about fitness and health. And I want to help people as much as I can. I answer as many DMs as I can about fitness. I have like notes upon notes of like, different paragraphs that can fit people and I change them around for people. So I don't have to fully cut, write something out now, but it's still customized to their uh, question. But so I helped Anthony work out for a couple weeks and Don was supposed to, but he was pretty sick for the like majority of the time, which is crazy. Pretty Glad sure I had COVID. <laughs> Wait, what? I was you making- yeah, you were... Anthony was doing good. Anthony was grinding. Anthony was threw up on his our first day, but oh my God. <laughs> I made a TikTok about that. He's like, he's like they don't need yeah, to know yeah. about that. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Anthony the day before was like, "Yes, I'm so excited. This is gonna be great." Oh, hit workout. Yeah, let's get it. Halfway through the hit workout, <laughs> dry heaving. <laughs> Over a trash can. Oh, good time. Yeah, I could take you it. Did, you I made could've. some significant like progress in like the two, three weeks. How much did you lose? I think I lost like 10 to 15 pounds. Yeah, like, that's crazy. And then uh, Jose lost 20 plus, right? Because, yeah, he lost a lot. But then we all got it back once <laughs> <laughs> Once uh, <laughs> coronavirus yeah, came quarantine. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not going to lie. I slacked my workouts a little bit. But I've been kicking my ass. I don't know if you – I sent a, a st- uh, video in the group chat – and yeah, on my stories, and I'm, I'm kicking my ass with running. I hate it, but I ran. Bro, you offended just... me. <laughs> you offended me because I was, I literally woke up to that, and I was like, "This dude's not running, dude." I just woke up. <laughs> and yeah, like, I was like, I was like, "Yo, Drake, shut the fuck up." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go to sleep, bro. It's funny the difference. Like, I mean, like we a lot have the same mindsets, but like it's kind of a little different. Like my minds, I'm a little, little crazy with some things like i'll do hit workouts to the point where i've been just thrown up and i have thrown up for my own workouts so and i don't know like i try i'm trying to do something that kind of sucks every day like i don't so if you guys knew david goggins he preaches do something that sucks every day like to callous your mind which is something great and it's like it makes sense but at the same time i don't fully agree with it like he's always like work on your skills you suck at and I'm kind of preaching out a little bit right now with like running, but I want to do it in a fitness aspect, but he's talking about in general, like focus on skills you suck at. And like, to me, I don't fully agree that if you suck at something, don't worry about it. Find something you're good at and get really, really good at it. Don't there get mediocre at all these other things that you suck there at. You Cause you're not, you, you got mediocre at it. Cool. But like someone who's a master at it, you think like Michael Jordan was like, all right, I'm good at uh, basketball, but I kind of suck at baseball. Let me go get really good at baseball. But no, he was good at basketball and drilled it hard as he could. And now Mm then a legend. (laughs) Exactly. But yeah, I I definitely agree with that. Like, I don't, I don't think it's, it's good to work on something you suck at because you're not just, you're just not going to be happy. That's another thing. (laughs) I don't think my parents don't understand the happiness thing. I don't know. Because my dad, I think, likes his business and stuff. But he definitely could be happier or something else. And like me, I, I, I don't know. I could be not make. I could live in an apartment, like a one room apartment. I don't know for the rest of my life. I guess I'd feel bad after a while. But as long as I'm <laughs> doing something I like, because I want to own my own gym, manage it, you know, get clients and stuff. Like, I love that. Like, I could quit all the social media stuff right now and just do gym stuff. But then, I mean, I'm helping people with this stuff, so I don't want to stop it now. And it's I like it. It's, it's enjoyable. Right. But yeah. like I could just have a gym and be happy. And like I couldn't be making that much, but I could still be happy and I would not be mad about it. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people need to understand that a lot of people get these sucky jobs and they what they hate life and it's just like we'll do something about it. Like, go get a better job. Right. Like not a better job, but go do something right. you like start mm-hmm. your own business. Or sometimes, you know, people aren't always in the position to quit their jobs, but most of these shitty jobs that people hate. I think Gary Vee started preaching about this uh, recently too. Like they give you a lot of free time and they're not really mm-hmm. up your ass. You know, like my, like, I don't, I don't want to say where I work or anything, but my job, like I can be on my phone. Like lucky. <laughs> I can be on my phone. Am I going to like, am I going to sit there and complain about it? Or am I going to do something on my phone that can 
better me for after I get out of work and I can continue on working on my side hustle. Like I could be typing out packages while I'm at work. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like like it's, it's, it's using those things to your advantage. Yeah. Like I remember, I think Gary V said it also someone else said it too. It's like, all right, you want to start your business, you're starting it and it's not going exactly the way you want, but tell me what you're doing in a day. Uh, You're eating breakfast for an hour a day. Um, You're, then you go and lollygag for another half hour until you can get out the door for work. And then you come home from work and you sit down and like, all right, I want to eat a little something and watch some TV for the next two, three hours. And then you kind of work on something. Well, it's like, dude, you could have cut out almost four hours of that and put it into mm-hmm. more work. And mm-hmm. it's just how it's, it's a lot of time management. And it's also what you prior prioritize. Yeah. I can't speak though. Well, yes. But now you got it. <laughs> But I don't know. It's Gary Vee. Any I encourage anyone anyone to watch Gary Vee. Even if you're not into business, he will Dude, help he will you. He will help lot. you with your life. Like I'm trying to start like fixing my sleep schedule because I was staying up like a uh, like super late hours. I was saying like four o'clock in the morning streaming because I'm trying to improve my streams and it's just not healthy to me. And like I started liking my fitness, but like I you know way more in health and fitness more than I am in anything else ever. So mm-hmm. I was like I got to stop doing this. So I'm trying to get myself to go to bed. I Got it down to 12, between 11 and 12 now, which is good. <laughs> and I'm waking up at 9. But I'm really trying to get it back to waking up at 5, 36 in the morning, work out, get all my workouts done before 8 or 9 in the morning, and I have the rest to do whatever I wanted. Because when I was waking up at 12 right. in the afternoon, like, I hate it. I never did that. Even, like, since I was little, I can remember I woke up at 6 o'clock in the morning, every morning. And waking me at 12 is the worst right. thing, especially when I was it, streaming yes. because I would do a little bit of something. I would kind of lollygag a little bit and then time to stream for the next 10 hours and no other time in the day to do anything. I couldn't work out. And like, I got a little miserable. And also what I found out from only like two weeks, not, not even two weeks, I'm just kind of playing video games and streaming and not doing anything physical. Dude, my knees sucked. It was crazy really? to realize that. Like, I could <laughs> feel my knees suit my legs for a week. My legs are still kind of weak. They're getting a little bit better from running and, like, actually using them every day now. But my knees would hurt a little bit when I'd bend them too far, like, like sitting on them a little bit. But I never had that problem before. And then I went and ran. And it, I, I was heavy. I felt heavy. And I'm not – I'm only 155 pounds. So I felt heavy, which was weird. And I'm thinking, well, I haven't moved in two, almost two weeks. That probably why it's crazy how only sitting for almost two weeks not doing much can completely change your body a little bit mm-hmm. and it kind of scared i don't, me. I don't know how like, i don't know how full-time streamers do that shit man it's, I, it's baffling yeah watch them. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy the stuff they do and i commend them everyone's like it's an easy job you sit down and play video games i guarantee you they don't want to play that game every day of the week because i'll tell you i don't want to play some games all the time but like I do mm-hmm. it, and I'm, I get sick of games. Yeah, and I'm sure they have fun with it and stuff because they're really good. But streaming this game, um, like eight hours a day, almost every day of the week for years, like that's that's a lot. And everyone's like, "Oh, it's super easy. You're not doing anything physical. It's not physical. It's mental." And oh, it's just it's just crazy how people can do all this social media stuff. And it's a lot, a lot more than I expected. Everyone's like, "Oh, you're TikTok. You're TikTok famous. You're you're fine." I'm like. I mean, yeah, but it's a lot more work than you kind of expect it to. I'm starting a podcast. It's a lot. I explained to you guys before the yeah. podcast. I have a podcast set up every day from now to next Monday, which is a, like a, another mm-hmm. awesome. Mm-hmm. And I'm about to start doubling up on those days. So, cause I have to, oh, actually, um, I have to do a photo shoot with the Jim Reaper, Anthony. So if you guys, um, no one's going to know, but the Jim Reaper is this guy that lives in our uh, town and he's a big fitness guy and he uh, has his own company and stuff. I'll link everything down below for him. Go check him out. He's dropping new clothes soon. I'm doing a photo shoot. I got my email. (laughs) (laughs) Don't worry, Dom. You're stopping me down there too. No, I got you. I got you. No, um, but I'm doing a photo shoot with him next week, which is insane. He wants to, he's reaching out to me now instead of me reaching out to him. But yeah. And cause he has a, I'm just big things are happening for all of us. I'm excited, but I want to get more back into fitness. Uh, you lost like what? It was 10 to 15 pounds from, Working out with me, right? Yes. And that was only, was, and I don't have a degree or anything. Like, yeah, you I, don't, I don't, I worked out with you for one day. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I want to get a degree so I have more like verification that I'm qualified in this. 
but there's like yeah i gotta learn a lot more too certified physical trainer yeah mm-hmm. definitely personal trainer and i want to I, I love it it's a lot of fun hold up hold up how, how how are like half the allied health kids certified physical trainers right it just comes with it <laughs> Oh yeah! How can, no, well, um, do, <laughs> you know uh, what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So in our school, we have um, Allied Health, which they have the sports med field, and I there's like a bunch of different fields, but sports 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 med is the only one I know and care about. Um, they all got their personal <laughs> training degree, and it's it's Katie. <laughs> yeah. No, Katie's not in that. Katie's in CNA. That's what it's CNA. Katie's yes, in CNA. CNA is oh, terrible. Sure. CNA is oh, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not uh, gonna but, explain. But I want to get personal training degree so I'm more, like, certified and more reliable to, like, get information yes. from. But, like, I obviously kind of know what I'm doing. I got you to lose 10 to 15 pounds in two, three weeks. And I got Jose to lose 20-plus pounds in two, three mm-hmm. weeks. And it's, you don't have to even have to work out. It's all diet. And it's all diet. And it's crazy how many people don't actually know no, that. I, I don't know if – It's like 30 – it's like 40 or 30 percent uh, working out because I was feeling great. Yeah. like I, I was feeling amazing. And I don't think you need to, like, you don't have, like, I, so if you want to lose weight quicker and, like, you know, do certain things your body, get bigger and stuff and get stronger faster, yes, you're going to have to work out. Mm-hmm. But if you just want to solely lose weight, you just need to diet. And you'll never yeah. have a toned body if you just do that. But um, a little bit of working out on top of that, like if say, you're not, you never worked out before and you just want to diet, lose weight, cool, you can do that, diet, lose the weight. But then you slowly get into working out. You just got to work out once or twice a week and slowly build it up. And you'll see great change really quick, quicker than you expect. And also depending on your age and your genes. But most people at the younger age, anywhere from 16 to like 30, they can change their body a lot with a little bit of, yeah. it's not as much work as you expect. We worked out maybe an hour a day. Like an hour a day. Yeah, and I do push pull legs, and which push would be chest, try shoulders, pull would be back, by and legs, just your legs. We'd work out. Well, I guess push day, which was three muscle groups, would take a little bit longer, be forty five to an hour of weightlifting, and mm-hmm. almost, about almost a half hour, some kind of cardio. No, twenty minutes Damn, cardio. I miss that man. I want to get us back in it. I miss the gym a lot. The gym, the not gym having the gym so sucks. Much. It really does. Restaurants not being around sucks too. Like actual restaurants. <laughs> Yeah, I feel bad for everyone. I, bad. I just want to go and sit down in a restaurant and just eat. Yeah. Like, I hate takeout because the food always fucking it's cold. And they, dude, I never thought the day would come, but Chick Fil A totally messed up my order. I got bodied. Like no way, uh, oh, dude. So Chick- sad. I thought Chick- no Chick-fil-A sauces, flawless. no sauces, bro. what? <laughs> no sauces, wrong size fry, no. and I got a chicken sandwich <laughs> with bacon and lettuce on it, and neither of the two were on there. They I definitely gave you the wrong it. order. They didn't yeah. mess your order. No, they just gave the right you the ticket. wrong one. No, it was the right ticket. Though, what? And, uh, and everything else was right for my family, but it was just my order. <laughs> what? I was mad. I was mad. Chick Fil A. No, what is happening? The world is definitely I'm, coming I'm to an end. I'm a red member too. I'm a red member. <laughs> I, I spent like four grand at Chick Fil A in the past year and a half. Oh like God. I'm the highest tier <laughs> there is. Chick Fil A. Yo, I should start using the app. I used to go like every day after school, which I don't do fast food very often anymore. But mm-hmm. I, when I went, I used to go all the time. You know how many points I could have? I never downloaded that app. Dude, and this one time I found a receipt on the ground from someone who was – they were having a business meeting. And I just scanned the receipt and I got like 10K points. <laughs> what? what? Their order was so much. It was like a few hundred bucks. Oh, my God. <laughs> It was sick. That happened to Will, too, a couple of times. Because his dad, he was like, hey, well, I found a receipt. <laughs> That's crazy. Yo, I have a mixed review on fast food places. I think fast food places need to be better regulated with foods, quantities, prices, and, like, their healthiness selection. Because it's so messed up to me. And, like, not many people agree with me on this. Because, But it's so messed up to me that you can go get – I can okay, I don't know. A Chick Fil A is super expensive because chicken, chicken's going up. But like McDonald's, you can get like a large fry, a large soda, and like a burger for less than five dollars. Oh, like mm-hmm. but a salad <laughs> is five plus dollars. Yep. Which is so bad to me. Like no, like no, like I understand why people would go and get the cheaper meal and get more food out of it for less. Like that makes sense to me, especially if you're a low income family. I totally understand that going to get the cheaper meal but these people but it's like our obesity rate as of 2016 was 36 percent like according to the cia factbook 
and that's four years ago. I, it, probably a little bit higher. It's not going to be substantially, but that's insane. One in, more than one in three people are obese. And that's so yeah, bad. That our yeah. leading health problem in the world, like our uh, leading death cause in the world is heart disease. And a big yeah. component to heart disease is high obesity. cholesterol. And yeah, you get cholesterol from obesity. And I think, uh, uh, yeah, I think what people need to learn how to do, especially during this quarantine is um, we have a lot of time on our hands. Now we used to live a very fast paced life. Uh, people were going to work every day. Now everyone's home, right? So how about, especially families with small children, how about we start learning how to cook? Yeah, yes. I, I'm sorry. You know, I'm like, to. make your own food, make it nutritious, make it healthy, and make it, for, make it right for your children. You know what I mean? And I didn't know that was a problem until this quarantine. It is, it is I knew how to cook. Like, I don't know how to cook everything like my parents do, but, like, also, they probably didn't know how to cook everything they do now until they're older. Mm-hmm. My mom learns a lot of new stuff now. But, like, I know how to cook a decent amount of stuff. I could live on my own, like, with cooking-wise. Yeah, mm-hmm. And it's scary to me how many people really don't know how to cook at all. Like, they, like ramen noodles, they burn it. Like, <laughs> I, it, it scares me. I don't know how you do that, but, like... <laughs> no, some people can't even uh, cook scrambled eggs. That's how some people... Like, that's why I didn't realize how reliant people were on fast food. Mm-hmm. And it's so bad. Like, a majority of people, a large percentage of people that die to corona or get it easier or have worse symptoms with it are obese people. Yes. And, yeah. like, I'm like, I just... Obviously, losing weight isn't always easy, and some people have actual problems and can't do certain things to lose weight, but you can always die. And I know there are people that do diet very well and do all these things, but it doesn't work for them, and that's an, upset, an exception. But it's also you shouldn't be – like, oh, I've been seeing all these things like plus-size models are like – I don't know – not love I, they're being accepted I, I, you can you don't unaccept you, you always accept people that are overweight but they're like publicizing overweight people and saying how it's okay and it's okay to be like overweight but if you're trying to fix it but it's not like you always love yourself but you should love yourself enough to make healthy decisions to make yourself mm-hmm. healthy when you're yes. overweight and you don't care I, I, mm-hmm. you're not yeah. loving yourself and that's in yeah. my opinion. exactly I think that was more like targeted towards like people who judge overweight people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like not not saying that like yeah like being overweight is cool. You know, it's just but like don't judge Dude. them because they're just a person just like anyone else. That shit is toxic though, man. Stuff. That shit is toxic. The way people nowadays flip shit like that shit is yeah. toxic, bro. Dude, like, we get offended by everything, bro. Everything. I yeah. try not to like uh, make fun of like not. Uh, I mean, I'll make fun of friends and stuff, but like. I try not to like comment on people I don't know because you don't know their stories and stuff. Right. Exactly. I just, like plus size models and stuff. No offense, really shouldn't be a thing because you're like showing these people that it's okay. I'm just showing, like telling people it's okay that you're overweight to stay there. <laughs> like, you would never show a picture of someone anorexic on a magazine, and that's good. Like you shouldn't. They shouldn't like commend being like super super skinny anorexic type stuff. But like I don't know how to. I don't want. Like, I don't want to dance around stuff, but I don't want to say the wrong thing either. But it's, I'm just. Uh, I get you. I think we should switch topics. Yeah, I just wish people like the world would commend being healthy. It's like, just how need, society is. It's yeah, just terrible. And, because, and they need to accept everyone, and everyone needs to be happy the way they are. And yes, accept everyone, but also make yourself healthy. Being overweight is not healthy. I know yeah, I was. Accept everyone, but mm-hmm. let's all make the right choices. Yeah, yeah, it's got a good way like, to put it. The world needs to make better, like. Thing, like not in the world, the U.S. or anyone everywhere. Yeah, I guess the world. Um, they need to teach nutrition from preschool. I, yeah. like, I was never taught nutrition until sophomore year of high school. I, I, like I love that class. Eat, eat, eat <laughs> apples and bananas. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I didn't know all this stuff on nutrition until nutrition class sophomore year, and I'm super into health. Yeah, same. And, and it's like I should be learning this in middle school and like younger than that it's just right i don't know there's so much the world no it's 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 so it's so middle school kids can have a glow up in high school <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> I had one of them <laughs> but like nothing can stop me i'm all the way up also our food is a lot worse than when it was like junk food back then wasn't as bad as junk food now like my dad yeah. grew up on like ice cream tasty cake soda and like my dad's not super skinny but he's not like 
obese or anything. He's a little chunky. He could get rid of his man tits a little bit, but it's all right. <laughs> it's, it's not bad condition. But, like, our right. food now is super, super, super bad, and there's so many more selections, too. It's because we don't <laughs> yeah. have Michelle Obama anymore. For real. <laughs> and she was the only one that cared. She was the OG. <laughs> she, Jacob, our, our friend she Jacob. She took away my milk in school. She took away my, my vanilla milk in school for the better, and I was like, I, I, I feel you, Michelle. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm just a uh, – oh, my voice cracks a lot. But – I don't know. I just wish we could do more. Like, I definitely want to do more. I definitely want to do stuff with, like, the world in general to make it healthier and getting our obesity rate below 30%. And, like, I don't know. It's just crazy to me that that's how high our obesity rate is, 36%. Like, it's just not healthy. And I I don't – because when I eat something bad, I get, like, kind of mad at myself because I'm like, wow, that wasn't good. I Will Smith talked about this. It's uh, called self-love. Yeah, if you have a goal, that. yeah, I would recommend anyone go look, look it up. Just look up Will Smith motivational speech. It's probably the first one that comes up. And he talks about like self love. It's like, oh, you have this goal, you have this goal, and you want to do it, and like a fitness goal, and you want to do it. And then you see like a bag of tasty cakes, and it's like, man, this tasty cake will make me feel real good right now. But tomorrow, I might hate myself. It's not going to end well. Mm-hmm. And it's just about self love and what you prior- prioritize. And it, like, I, that yeah. stuck with me. That's what I don't eat super unhealthy. Yeah, like, I'll have a snack here and there. Like, obviously, it's okay. But it's worse more than more now than ever because people, people love that instant gratification. Oh, yeah. And like, I mean, everyone's guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. I do this shit all the time. But yeah. it, it still doesn't take away from the fact that it makes you feel like shit. Yeah, like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I had a donut a little bit ago, but it's one donut. I woke Three, up at – Cal, could you? I woke up at 7.30 <laughs> this morning. I ran my two miles, eight eggs, and a protein shake. So, it's not like I – I'm not rewarding myself. I know, like, I'm not going to do you know, a donut tomorrow. I'm probably going to eat pretty strictly clean tomorrow. But I don't I haven't had a donut in months, <laughs> actually. It's the first right. time I had a donut in a while. Oh, then you're good. You're good. Yeah, so it's not like I do it often. It's okay to have certain, certain things. But you need to just like think like long term. Don't think right now. Oh, this donut's gonna be so good. But I mean, mm. I'm having a box of donuts a day in six months, dude. You're gonna have some jelly rolls, like. <laughs> yeah. So. I don't know, but it's been about an hour, actually over an hour. We've been talking, guys. Yeah. Oh Hold yeah. On. I want I want to add something real quick, Jake, before you pull the plug. Um, my dad wanted me to tell you that he's breaking on your sign. He started routering it a couple hours ago, and it's looking pretty good. Yes, he uh, hey. he was DMing me, and I can't wait. I'm so excited. I'll link his stuff, your stuff. I link everyone's stuff right now. What a guy! What's the sign for? It's it's a uh, it's, a, it's basically logo. a plaque with my logo and my name on it. Oh yeah. wow! What? Yeah, I'm super hey, excited. You want one too? Oh, my dad will make you one too. Goodness. No, dude, his stuff like my is logo? insane. Yeah. No way! Wait, wait, yeah, hold on. You gotta hit me, me up. How, how much for that? Uh, oh, I don't know. Okay. I have to talk to him. But how much was Drake's? Uh, I don't know. However much he talked about coding it about. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to see. But I can I can definitely work some things out for you. Yeah, don't definitely. Worry. But you yeah, know, his dad makes some cool stuff. But all right, yes, it's been over an hour, not much, but a little bit over an hour. I want to cut that here. I've had a blast talking to you guys. I definitely want to talk to you guys yeah, more. We can do some good topics. Yes. I want to talk to everyone in the group chat. It's been fun, but. Thank you guys all for listening. I'm just watching, but it's a podcast. Um, <laughs> thank we'll do you guys all for in the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to definitely get in person once. Definitely, that'd be so much fun. That yes. would be amazing. Thank you, everyone. Again, this is episode two. Let me know what I need to work on. And yeah, guys, we're done. Thank you guys all for joining. Bye.